With their cards on the table and pulling no punches, labor and management get together in Washington in an endeavor to solve the post-war strike problem and plan for future industrial harmony. William Green, American Federation of Labor President, states labor's case. Labor's basic right to organize and bargain collectively and the full acceptance of that right by the employers stand side by side with the right of employers to manage their enterprise and direct its operation without interference. That right should be respected and wholeheartedly accepted by all labor. Labor cannot and will not forfeit its right to protest. It cannot and will not surrender its right to strike. The right to strike is a part of the free enterprise system. By curbing this inherent right, we would take a decisive and irrevocable step toward far-reaching regimentation, not only of labor, but of all industry as well. In an appeal to the management labor heads to resolve their differences, Eric Johnston of the United States Chamber of Commerce tells the delegates bluntly, Perhaps we cannot blame the public for being a little sour at our constant bickerings. For the public, more than anything else, want peace, peace at home, and peace abroad. Nor can we attain those higher levels of standards of living which we all desire if we're going to frighten the customers by our methods of dealing with each other. And so I would like to say to you this afternoon that I hope we meet less frequently in the headlines and more frequently around the conference table. That's the democratic way of doing business. The American people have one thought upon their minds today. Are we in this room big enough to do the job that's before us? Gentlemen, I think we are. Berlin, the ghost of a once great city, bears its gaping wounds to the sky. A city upon which has fallen the full fury of retribution. And from the rubble and debris, a beaten people digs its way out like frantic moles. In the struggle for survival, every hand is turned to the task of salvage. But the most crying need in gasless and coalless Berlin is fuel as the specter of winter looms. Every available stick of wood is garnered against the bitter months ahead. Charcoal burners go full blast to supply cooking fuel. The small supply of briquette coal is strictly rationed to women with children. But life goes on. A sandwich man still has a job, and kids rush from an underground school as usual. But dark days face the children of the master race. Another great weapon developed by our army is Little David, the world's mightiest cannon. A 36-inch mortar, it is capable of firing a two-ton shell more than eight miles. Designed for the invasion of Japan, it was perfected too late to see actual combat. The great offensive weapon is fired by remote control, and here the Signal Corps camera records its first shot in public. Forced cement installations, much like those the Japs had on Tarawa and other islands, are blasted wide open. The great penetrating power of the mortar's missile makes it particularly effective against underground forts. It digs a crater 38 feet deep and 22 feet across. Little David packs a punch hard enough to knock out any Goliath. At the Washington Navy Yard, two special victory loan trains are ready to set out on a tour which will cover 17 states. Christening the Navy Special is Mrs. Ted Gamble, wife of the National War Finance Director. 
Interesting exhibits draw a crowd before the train gets the green light. Not to be outdone, the Army, too, schedules a series of public exhibition trains to boost victory bond purchases. Returned heroes will accompany the trains, demonstrating the latest fighting equipment, much of it never before shown publicly. The original Japanese and German surrender documents and Marshal Goering's jewel-studded baton are part of the show. In Philadelphia, a group of veteran Leathernecks will man the Marine Victory Loan Special. The men who struggle to shore onto Pacific beachheads under a murderous hail of enemy bullets in order to assure the victory carry an important message for you on their trade.